crushing your own glass is actually a very, very simple technique um, and it only uses very minimal supplies. Uh, so first things first, let's just go over safety. Uh, so when you're doing this, you're going to want to make sure that you do have a pair of safety glasses. I picked these up at the dollar store. This is just to ensure that I don't get any glass fragments jumping into my eye. It's, it's not very likely that that would happen, but you know, better safe than sorry. Another thing, and this is, this is crucial to work with, uh, work with these broken glass pieces is to find a pair of gloves. Um, that have like the padded bottoms. These have the rubber bottoms. These are just gardener gloves. Again, I got these from my local do dollar store and they were fantastic to protect my fingers from any glass fragments that could puncture through. Um, so having said that, the beads themselves, they're just the glass gems that you, you can pick up almost anywhere that fill up the vases. vases. Uh, these ones again, I got from the dollar store. You will notice a theme with me. I love using the dollar store or the thrift stores. Anywhere that I can find a bit of a bargain, I will definitely do so. Uh, so on your stovetop and your frying pan, you're gonna have this kind of setup here. And along the side, another critical and crucial step to make sure that you get the results that you want is to make sure that you also have a bowl uh, on the side and ready to go. It's full of ice, it's super cold, and this will ensure that you do get the proper results. So, and then of course we have our hammer, and then we have a couple of cups just for storage. After we have completed the, uh, the cooking portion, actually while I'm talking, I'm gonna just put this on high. So you wanna cook these on high for about eight minutes or so. Um, now, when I go to crush them, you can use a tea towel if you so please. What I've noticed about tea towels though is that they tend to, to get ripped apart after a few uses and then you have to keep replacing them. And to me, that that's, uh, tends to get a little costly and a little pricey after a while. So what I've done is I actually found this placemat at Walmart. It's a thick... Uh, thick fabric and it's quite stiff and this has actually lasted me a very long time so when you're looking for something you want to kind of keep things like this in mind and then I have just a frame from a Amazon box I put this on top of the mat this just protects it doesn't protect but it stops some of the uh, some of the glass fragments from flying away and leaving me. So if you can't find one of these placemats, um, like I said, a tea towel will work just fine. Or if you, uh, those flimsy, uh, flimsy uh, chopping boards, those will work just as well. One of the biggest criteria when you are crushing your glass is to make sure your floor itself, you are on a hard floor. Cement or, um, yeah, cement is your best bet. But if you are in linoleum or anything with a hard surface, that'll work too. Just make sure you don't try to do this on carpet. It will not work. So it's been about eight minutes since I have started this and we are going to go and turn it off now and put it in the water. You'll see. Here it's sizzling. And that's great. We're just gonna leave it in there for, for a couple minutes. Don't reach your hand in there right away. And then you will actually, you'll see, you'll see the, uh, the result and what we're looking for. All right, hopefully this can show up on the camera. So you can see, oh, you can kind of see. So really you want that crackling effect, right? That was the whole purpose of putting into the cold water. This just makes your life so much easier. So I'm gonna go ahead and clean up this area and get ready for the next step. Now that I have everything set up for our second phase of doing this, um, we can go ahead and get going on the crushing part of it, the fun part of it. 
So I have these two to get started just to kind of show you guys uh, how to do this. I have the rest of the glass beads just drying on paper towel. So now I take my hammer, my trusty little hammer, and you don't have to go very hard with this. But I just tap it a few times and you can see it's already broken apart. So and you can see why I have the uh, the little barrier there now. All right, I'll do it this way. So the first couple times you uh, you I guess you hit it with the hammer, you'll usually end up with bigger bigger chunks like this. Uh, do keep your glo gloves on. I'm just doing this for the uh, the sake of the video. You will have bigger chunks. You can go ahead and place these if those are the size that you want. I typically like to have some bigger pieces mixed with the smaller pieces. Um, it's always really nice to have when you're doing these types of these types of crafts. Uh, it just gives a little more dimension and a little more, um, I guess, interest, eye interest, when you have different size variations. So having said that, you just want to keep on going until you get to the sizes that you want. And then I just grabbed this little scraper thing. I picked this up again from the dollar store. So just go ahead. And you can even use like a piece of, piece of, I don't know, like a, a card or something um, to help scrape this up. I just, I don't recommend that you use your bare hands for this. It's just, there we go. You just place it in like that. Preferably not all over the place. I did dump a little bit out of there, but that's all right. All right. And you just keep continuing, repeating that pattern until you get the amount that you want or uh, enough glass. Ah. It's just that easy. Simple. All right. So let's move on to the second portion of this and we're gonna we're gonna start dyeing our glass. I'm gonna be showing you guys some really super easy techniques on how to dye your own glass. Um, this just saves a lot of money in the long run and it also gives you the colors that you really want. So for this demonstration I'm going to be using purples uh, but you can go ahead and just use whatever colors that you want. Uh, depending on what project you were working on. So the first one we're going to be doing is the alcohol ink. This is a resin dye. I got a whole pack of this. I think it was a pack of like 24 different dyes and I got them on Amazon. So I can do basically any color that I can dream up. It's extremely handy. So for this one, I'm actually using my fire glass. Uh, and the biggest thing when you are when you are dying, forgive me, I gotta get myself a little more comfortable and into the camera. When you are using different dyes, remember less is always more. And so if you want more of an iridescent look, uh, like a see-through look, of course you only want to do one or two drops at a time. I'm just gonna mix those together. bit darker on camera but in person this is actually I can still see through the glass it just has a really nice nice light texture to it I'm just gonna mix it together a little bit better
And for this portion, I'm going to add one more drop uh, for these um, for these glass pieces. I do want to have more of an iridescent look or a more of a see-through, a light look. So I'm going to go ahead and just keep it nice and light when it comes to the dye. Mix it as well as I can. Desired, desired look that you want. Just go ahead and put this on some paper towel. And try to keep it as flat as possible so it dries out evenly. Right. So you can see like there's a little tiny hint of that purple. Um, you can still see the clear this is, like, this is exactly what I was going for for this look. If I wanted it to be darker, obviously I would start adding more and more as I went. Uh, the second technique is the mica powder and you mix the mica powder with, with your glue. So for this demonstration, I'm going to just be mixing with the iridescent glitter glue. I love, love, love having that extra bit of shine and that extra bit of glitter and glimmer uh, throughout all my little rock pieces. I never, I am a firm believer you can never have too much glitter. Um, but if, if you do want to just have a solid color any Elmer's glue that dries clear, that'll work just as well. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to just add, make sure you can actually see that, um, add a couple, a little tiny bit of the powder. About there, we'll start there. And then we add a few drops of the glue. Oops. Right, we'll start there and see how how well we get our cover. All right, you can see how that's still pretty light. I do want it to be a little bit darker. So I'm going to add more mica, 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 mica. I'm just going to say powder from now on. Oh goodness. And a little more blue. show you guys because what I love about this is it actually gives you um, it gives you a solid color so for the sake of the video I'm gonna try my best I don't know if you can see that so you can see how it looks like actual gemstone and you can't actually see through it like you like you can on here this is that different like that dimension um, that I absolutely love. Like I love using the the powder to be able to achieve that really thick metallic look. Um, the biggest thing is when you are, if you do decide to use glue, you don't want to put it on a paper towel to dry because I mean obviously being glue it's going to bond to the paper towel and then you're gonna have like pieces of paper towel as you take off uh, take off the uh, the glass from the paper towel and it's just, it's not going to be a good time for you. So I typically leave these in the cup and allow them to dry. Um, you can also, if you, uh, you can also achieve, um, the same kind of thing 
with the uh, with the dye, it'll still you'll still be able to see through it a little bit. But if you wanted, um, uh, if you wanted, you could also add the glue to the uh, to the alcohol ink as well. So last but not least, like I said prior, I love glitter. Um, and I, I love to incorporate a little bit of a clear, uh, a clear portion or clear pieces in, in with the, um, um, in with the, uh, gemstone or the, uh, the geode. So it gives an illusion of a more of a natural, uh, natural stone. It's really difficult apparently to speak and do this at the same time. So I never actually taught how to do this. I just, this is usually something I like to do like a personal hobby. So it's a little bit different when I'm, I'm telling people how to do it versus just doing it. So bear with me a little. heck that is but we're just gonna get that out of there and again be really really careful when you are working with the glass um, and your bare fingers if you feel more comfortable using uh, using some gloves for this go ahead and do so but anyway the same thing with this because I am using the glue um, I'm gonna keep it inside the cup I'm not gonna put it in the paper towel but whether or not you use alcohol ink or you use the mica powder depending on um, depending on the look that you're trying to achieve again the mica powder is going to give you a solid metallic look um, whereas the alcohol ink is going to give you more of an iridescent uh, iridescent look to it and then of course the glitter glue this is optional you don't have to use this but i do like incorporating this into my projects because it just gives that extra eye appeal. Alright, so once you have those all mixed up, that's about it. And then you're going to wait about 24 to 48 hours to allow these to dry.